This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to uh, show various things about the um, uh, the melt season uh, because there are some comments, uh, just very few people who are just taking the word of uh, of computer modelers that the sea ice is not going to uh, disappear until the year 2030. Uh, this is, well, not exactly, but more or less the same people who um, who said that uh, Greenland was going to start melting in 2100, uh, where in fact it started 70 years before that. Um, yeah, so you can't get around that one. Anyway, this is the latest on Arctic sea ice extent. And you've got to bear in mind that this is the area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice. So I'm just going to go through this. Uh, so what folk misunderstand is that although the sea ice is tying with the 2012 melt year, conditions are completely different. Note, the above defines sea ice extent as the area of ocean with at least 15% Ice. So what this means is that you could have six inches thick ice and it would still be defined as sea ice extent. And this is far removed from 2012 when there was plenty of ice that was several metres thick. So when the ice is in such a condition, the sea ice extent data can go up and down like a yo-yo, but this is not really a predictor of what might happen. So I just got some data from the uh, the U.S. Navy site, which I regard as being quite uh, reliable. Uh, and there are no areas where the sea ice concentration is at 100%, and it has changed quickly. So, um, yeah, well, this is this is how it, how how it stands at the moment. So look at these look at these areas, very very close. Uh, to the pole. So particularly alarming, the following shows that ice in the central Arctic basin is between 0.5 and 1 meter thick and the tiny area of thicker ice north of Greenland is only 2 meters thick. Now all that old ice has now completely disappeared as you can see from here. Uh, there are not been very many uh, fine days, so I had to go back to the end of July. Um, yeah, it's the same. So uh, here we are. This is what I wanted to show. This shows the uh, the changes over the last uh, thirty days. And it goes into a forecast period, what they expect to happen. So you can see how the ice is getting very, very thin rapidly. And this is really the only area here of, uh, well, more or less intact ice. And another, this is another source of um, ice concentration. So you can see what the uh, the average sea ice extent is. So you can see really it's here in the Russian sector and also in the Beaufort and Chukchi seas where the major changes have occurred. So I'll just read on. It's difficult to say in these conditions what might transpire during the remaining weeks of sunlight and beyond, but those people who are claiming to know that there might be a blue ocean event or not do not know what they're talking about, in my view. Um, so I'm not going to play the uh, um, the uh, uh, the video here. Uh, I'll put a link to it. Um, so let's go on. And this is what I put today. This, this, uh, a very small number of people have posted comments with overconfident assertions that there will be no blue ocean event this year, based on the assertions of 
the same computer modelers that were 30, 70 years, that's three generations out when it came to the Milton Greenland. So I have to agree with the person that tweeted this. Larry79115 says, we're entering a new epoch. The ice sheet is untethered and our sea ice minimum will be in October or November, in my humble opinion. So I've got no idea uh, who he is, whether he's a scientist or a lay person or what. He's referring to this, which shows just how hot the seas are around the, um, the Arctic. So now I agree with this, and why is that? Because it's based on actual observations. Margot and I were watching this carefully last year, and we noted that the ice did not really start to refreeze until at least November. The data and the satellite images do not lie. So here, for example, is data for sea ice thickness and concentration for the latter half of October last year. So you can see that's not exactly uh, very thick. This is the very time that the sea ice should be growing back uh, quite quickly. So you can see it expanding in extent, uh, but not really in thickness. And it's the thickness and the concentration, the volume of ice, that's the most important. And here goes another alternative way of seeing it. Uh, you can see the sea ice concentration uh, for the 22nd October 2018. So it ain't looking very good there. So that's why I don't really take too seriously assertions that the melt season stops on September on a particular day when the sun starts to disappear. I would say uh, because of the conditions, the temperatures of the oceans, be ready for anything in the next month or two. Um, I think people are looking at this in quite the wrong way. So now this was interesting. This came out from Zach Laid today and it shows the uh, the late summer sea ice extent for the last 1500 years. I mean, I've got no idea how they calculate uh, sea ice thickness uh, in a period from b before the satellite era, but this uh, certainly uh, shows something, and it certainly doesn't show that uh, there was uh, as some denialists have said that uh, earlier in the 20th century there was no sea ice. That's absolutely preposterous. Anyway, that's just a short uh, update from me, uh, Seymour Rocks uh, reporting from Down Under.